What's up guys, back with another Fallout 4 countdown video, and today I figure we could go over 10 of what I think are some of the worst legendary guns and weapons in this game. Now before we start, I do have to admit that this list was a little bit harder to make, simply because you could argue that even if a weapon has a legendary weapon effect, it's usually better than its base variant. So for the most part, I'm going to be going over weapons that either have redundant legendary effects, and or talk about legendary weapons that make you want to groan as soon as you see them. I may also include some weapons that can't technically drop in this game, but the vast majority of the weapons that will appear on this list can drop from various legendary enemies. However, without further ado, these will be the top 10 worst legendary guns and weapons in Fallout 4, starting now. Number 10. The Resolute Assault Rifle Now, the Assault Rifle in Fallout 4 is a fairly decent weapon. While it's ultimately surpassed by the Combat Rifle after you have invested a significant amount in upgrades, the Assault Rifle still tends to be pretty well balanced and has a noticeably faster reload speed than the Combat Rifle does and is capable of having significantly larger magazine size as well. For the uninitiated, the Resolute Effect is a legendary weapon effect that got added with Fallout 4's Far Harbor DLC, and what it does is it creates bullet time when the final round in a magazine is in the gun. Now, at first glance, this may not seem all that useful, however for weapons with lower magazine sizes like the 44 Magnum or Western Revolver, you're going to be seeing the final chamber in the magazine far more often, and thus you will be able to take advantage of the bullet time. The thing is, this specific legendary weapon effect isn't anywhere near as good on weapons with magazine sizes above 10, and since the Resolute Assault Rifle is consistently above 10 bullets per mag, I think you'll find that you will rarely, if ever, be able to take advantage of the bullet time that this legendary effect offers. Ultimately, you would be better off with a Deadeye Assault Rifle, which allows you to simply toggle the bullet time by aiming down sights. So if you see this effect on weapons that tend to have higher magazine sizes, you should probably sell them. Number nine, the Enraging Pipe Revolver. Now, I know we're supposed to be talking about Fallout 4 in this video, but one of the things that I actually really like about Skyrim is how you could play as an Illusion Mage, and how you could cast spells that will allow you to get various enemies to fight one another. And I think this worked in Skyrim because you could quickly cast Frenzy and get a lot of people affected this way. However, in Fallout 4, the Enraging Effect only allows one to apply one Frenzy at a time upon scoring a critical hit. So unless you've invested a significant amount into Critical Banker and Luck, the Enraging Effect is going to be of little use to you. Furthermore, when it comes to various pipe weapons in Fallout 4, the Pipe Revolver has the highest action point cost on average. So if you plan on using the Enraging Effect portion, you're most likely going to be consuming an unnecessary amount of additional action points than you otherwise would. That and the Pipe Revolver is generally regarded to be fairly awful. While 308 versions are okay, I think you'll find that the Pipe Revolver is usually less efficient with 38 caliber, and the 45 caliber Pipe Pistol uh, will actually have better fire rate overall. In general, legendary Pipe Revolvers leave something to be desired. While they are flexible and easy to mod, you'll reach a point in the game when you're simply not dealing enough damage. So maybe you could use something like this early on, but then sell it once you find something better. Number 8. The Troubleshooter's Walking Cane As you might expect, legendary walking canes suck. While I suppose it wouldn't be absolutely awful to have one with the wounding or furious effects, pretty much any other legendary weapon effect on the walking cane is groan worthy. After all, is anyone actually excited over the junkies walking cane that they just got? Or are they excited about the new VATS enhanced walking cane that they just got? I don't think so. I also think when it comes to legendary weapon effects that target specific enemy types, I would say that the troubleshooter's effect is probably among the worst, simply because there aren't very many enemies to fight in the vanilla game that are robots. And now, true, while Automatron prominently features robot enemies and the Galactic Zone from Nuka World is nothing but robots, there aren't really a whole slew of other robot enemies that you can fight in Fallout 4 Vanilla. And having a troubleshooter's walking cane is basically like having one of the worst melee weapons with one of the worst legendary weapon effects, and honestly, I think you would be better off with a lot of other items. Ultimately, guys, legendary walking canes are pretty bad, and if you see them, you're gonna be upset. Number seven, the junkies rolling pin. As you might expect, legendary rolling pins are pretty awful, and like walking canes, are pretty groan-worthy when you come across them. 
While I suppose the argument could be made that a rolling pin with a legendary effect could be sold at some decent profit, the actual weapon itself would be terrible. However, the junkie's effect when combined with the rolling pin is something that I would imagine would be pretty awful. While it's true that you would be getting a 165% damage increase per swing, provided you had 11 addictions, I think the overall debuffs that you would experience would be too much and wouldn't be worth it. Assuming you were just addicted to buff out, fury, psycho, jet, and medex, you would receive a negative 4 debuff to strength, a negative 2 debuff to endurance and agility, and a negative 1 debuff to your perception. And that's not even including a negative 20 debuff to damage resistance. So sure, maybe you would gain some kind of damage bonus with the junkie's effect on a melee weapon, but overall, your melee damage would be compromised because of your addictions. The junkie's effect in general seems to work best on guns since your stats don't tend to affect the damage of those types of weapons. As for melee weapons, the junkie's effect is a no-go. Number 6. The Powerful Slash Mighty Submachine Gun While the explosive effect can make the submachine gun relatively decent, the slight damage boost offered by the powerful or mighty effects isn't going to improve the submachine gun's core problems. Sure, maybe you'll be dealing 12 to 13 damage instead of 10 or so before upgrades, but you're not going to be fixing things like the atrocious weight of the weapon itself. Not to mention that the submachine gun makes a poor use of your 45 caliber ammo. To give you some idea, automatic pipe weapons tend to deal about the same amount of damage and have ammo that costs a third of what 45 caliber ammo costs. And keep in mind that pipe weapons are also lighter overall. And while you don't get a 100 round magazine like you do on the submachine gun, I think you'll find that you don't really need it. So while the powerful or mighty submachine gun is better than the regular variant, it's not really that much better to justify using it over something else like a regular combat rifle or a regular radium rifle. And if you're primarily using automatic weapons, both the combat rifle and the radium rifle can be modified for automatic fire, and while they won't fire quite as fast, they will allow you to deal more damage overall. Number 5. The Kneecapper's Fat Man So the kneecapper's effect is typically best on ranged weapons, however it probably excels on automatics simply because you can more quickly cripple an enemy's knee, provided that you're just attacking faster. After all, the kneecapper's effect is chance based, and there is only a 1 in 5 chance that your attack will actually cripple an opponent's leg, let alone 2. Now, the reason why the kneecapper's fat man is bad is because the fat man simply lacks the ability to attack multiple times in a second. Again, when you actually fire a mini nuke, there is a 1 in 5 chance that it's actually going to cripple the enemy's leg. That and the fat man is designed to destroy whatever is in front of you in one shot rather than to disarm or disable your opponent. While you might be able to take advantage of the kneecapper's effect on a fat man up against an abnormally strong creature, you're really better off just optimizing your fat man for the highest damage possible by maxing out heavy gunner and demolition expert perk. While it doesn't necessarily make use of the kneecapper effect per se, one of my complaints about the striker from Fallout 4's Far Harbor DLC is that even though it appears to have a slightly better version of the kneecapper effect, you simply can't fire modded bowling balls fast enough to reliably take advantage of the legendary effect that it offers. So I guess if you see a kneecapper's fat man, you might be better off on just passing on it. Number 4. The Instigating Minigun so out of the many projectile based weapons in Fallout 4, the minigun is capable of the least damage output per shot. The only other weapons that come close are probably pipe weapons and the submachine gun, which both have a base damage of 10. And to make matters worse, the minigun also has a fairly bad upgrade path. You will need to be level 39 with proper perk investment in order to upgrade the minigun's base damage to 10, to put it on par with a pipe pistol. While the minigun can be unbelievably overpowered with the right legendary weapon effects, I would say that the instigating effect will probably be the least useful on the minigun. After all, the instigating effect is best used on weapons with high base damage, like the Fat Man, 
Gauss rifle, and other similar weapons. And while you may get slightly enhanced damage on the first shot, provided that the enemy is at full health, each subsequent shot will deal the same amount of damage that it otherwise would. And I don't really see any particular way to redeem this particular weapon either. While I suppose it wouldn't be so bad at the start of your playthrough, you get to a certain point where it's really better to have high base damage on a weapon than it is to have better overall DPS. Ultimately, the instigating minigun is pretty bad. Number 3. The Stalker's Flamer so the Flamer is kind of an underpowered weapon in Fallout 4. While you can upgrade the damage far more than you can with something like the minigun or the missile launcher, the problem is that upgrading the weapon's damage greatly reduces the weapon's range. This is a shame because the Flamer can actually be a semi-decent weapon with the right legendary weapon effects. For example, the kneecapper Flamer is great up against creatures because you can easily cripple their limbs, or in the case of the Staggering Flamer, you can use it to temporarily stun enemies, opening them up to deal more damage. The Stalker's Flamer, on the other hand, is a very counterintuitive combination of both Legendary Weapon Effect and its base variant. The Stalker Effect is typically used on sniper weapons to increase their accuracy during VATs. However, in order to get this particular effect to work, you have to be outside of combat, and you will probably get your best results on a weapon that can be silenced. The Flamer has both poor range and can't be silenced. Not to mention that the Flamer is like the minigun and the base variant Gatlin Laser in the sense that a single shot from these weapons doesn't necessarily deal a lot of damage. So in both cases, the Stalker's effect is an awful match for the Flamer as you will rarely if ever be able to take advantage of the legendary effect itself. Not to mention that the Flamer has some weird glitches when used in VATS. While this may just be a unique issue to my game, I've noticed that if I target an enemy with the Flamer and Vats, once I leave Vats, I suddenly can't deal any more damage. So, I would say that the Stalker's Flamer is going to be something that you're going to want to avoid. Number 2. The Ghoul Slayer's Gamma Gun Now, the Gamma Gun by itself isn't really all that bad. In fact, the ability to deal radiation damage can make certain human-based legendary enemies like legendary gunners far easier to defeat. This is because radiation damage simply reduces an enemy's maximum health, rather than actually dealing damage to that specific enemy. However, certain enemies aren't affected, and are even healed when you deal radiation damage. Enter the Ghoul Slayer's Gamma Gun, a gun that is supposed to deal 50% additional damage to ghouls, but instead may end up healing them more than the Gamma Gun otherwise would. This is an instance where you get a legendary effect that shouldn't be on this particular weapon, as the Gamma Gun doesn't really benefit at all. That said, you can actually make the Gamma Gun itself deal damage to ghouls by adding the Electrical Signal Antennae customization. Because this customization allows the Gamma Gun to deal energy damage, this can be used to deal damage to ghouls and does appear to benefit from the Ghoul Slayer's legendary weapon effect. While I haven't tried it, it may also work fairly well if you put Lorenzo's Artifact on a Ghoul Slayer's Gamma Gun. That way you get the benefit of having two legendary effects on the same weapon. But at this point, you would probably just be better off with something other than the Ghoul Slayer's Gamma Gun. I guess while this weapon isn't totally awful, it isn't really that great either. Number 1. The Medic's Missile Launcher and Fat Man now, it's worth mentioning that the Medic's effect doesn't occur naturally in Fallout 4. If you wanted to add this specific weapon effect to your weapons, you're going to have to either use console commands, or you're going to have to download a mod that allows you to install legendary weapon effects onto various in-game weapons. The reason the Medic's effect wasn't used in-game was because it's a weapon effect that allows all damage dealt to heal enemies. So it's actually impossible to kill anything with the Medic's effect on the weapon. In fact, if you wanted to, I suppose you could shoot at your own feet with the Medic's Missile Launcher and Fat Man and not deal any damage to yourself. In fact, this can actually be used to heal the player. Ultimately, there's not really a whole lot else to the Medic's Effect or the Medic's Missile Launcher itself. Using it seems like it would just further complicate playing through Fallout 4, so I can't say that I really recommend it. At least you don't have to worry about this gun dropping in game. But alright guys, I think that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like, click the bell to join the notification squad, and as always, take care, and I'll see you all next time.